The Dairy NZ Milk Smart presentation is about cow flow on the dairy farm. Poor cow flow causes frustration, wastes time, and then one of my big interests is lameness. It causes lameness. Even if you don't have poor cow flow on your farm, maybe this session will help you understand why and make sure it continues that way. If you do have poor cow flow, we're going to look at a whole lot of different areas where we commonly get poor cow flow on a dairy farm and give you some ideas that will help change on your farm. In summary, we're going to look at three areas. We're going to look at the track and the entrance area. We're going to look at the shed, particularly the use of the backing gate. And finally, the interaction of cows and people. So important to get good cow flow. Okay, let's start by looking at the track. There are so many important things on the track that can affect cow flow. And the bigger the herd gets, the more important other factors. Let's start by looking at the width of the track. I'm going to measure this track. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. What a beautiful track, seven and a half meters wide. In actual fact, even for 500 cows, we don't need it much more wide than this. We never want it narrower than five meters though. Even in a small herd of 150 cows, we say five meters, because it allows vehicles to move to the left and the right to compact the track without always going on the same place. If you go in the same place every day, you end up with gullying and the track falls to bits. So the minimum width is five meters. For every 100 cows more, we add half a meter. And this track is beautiful. It's seven meters wide. It's enough for 500 cows. And so the width of the track allows cows to choose where to walk. Instead of being forced to walk in lines, they can choose a place to walk. A wide track ends up with good cow flow and we've got a beautiful track here. The width of the track is really important for good cow flow. But even if you have the right width like this track, if you have too much steepness of the camber, we call it, the cows won't flow well. So here, we need the water to go off, but we don't want it to be too steep. Cows prefer a track to be exactly level, but we've got to have camber to get the water off. The trouble is many tracks are too steep. Anything more than 8%, the cows don't like walking on it. They'll force, you can force them to walk on it, but they won't voluntarily walk on it. It affects cow flow. Okay, that board's level. The slope on this track is about 6%. Six centimeters in one meter. The cows will walk voluntarily on this. If it's more than 8%, they won't walk voluntarily on this slope. Some farmers ask me about the camber. Should it be in both directions? or just one direction. And I see many farms with cambers in one direction. I want to ask you a question. Where would the cows walk if this track only had one angle? You're right. They'd either walk on the top or they walk on the bottom. When you have a camber both directions, they tend to walk a lot in the middle. The problem with that one angle is they walk at the top or the bottom. There's one other problem though. When it rains, like it is today, that whole track takes all the water. It washes the surface off. If you've got a camber in both directions, you halve the damage of the rain. And what's our big problem with tracks? Rain. Right, I want to test your knowledge. Here's a picture of a track. What can you notice on this track? There's grass on the edge of the track. Why is there grass on the edge of this track? Yep, the cows are avoiding that area. That's why the grass is growing. And what's the reason for that? It's too steep. The camber is too steep and they're avoiding that bit. Okay, here's another picture. What can you notice in this picture? Yep, the cows are walking along the edges. Why are they doing that? You got it. Look at the center of the track. The surface is so rough, they're avoiding that part of the track. 
Now let's move to the collecting yard, a really important part on every dairy farm, where the concrete meets the gravel of the track. Without a nib wall, water flows from the concrete onto the track and damages the track. The interesting thing is, we could put a nib wall right on the end and it would stop the water, but it causes another problem. If the nib wall is right on the edge, the cows coming out all have their step in exactly the same place and end up damaging the track. So what we do with our nib wall is we put it back from the end of the concrete, round about 500 mil back. So the cows step over the nib wall onto here and their next step is more random. It doesn't end up with a groove just like that. The shape of the nib wall is so important. Many people make a nib wall with a rounded shape thinking it's safer on the cow's feet. In actual fact, cows hate a rounded shaped nib wall. They don't know where the beginning is or the end is and they slip on it. A square nib wall works so well for good cow flow. The cows know where the beginning and end of it and they just step over it with no problem at all. Let's now look at the backing gate. The backing gate is just there to take up space, never to push cows. The problem with backing gates, many times they move too fast and they push the cows, the heads come up, the feet skid and too much pressure. Okay, now let's measure the speed of the backing gate. In actual fact, this gate is perfect. It's less than a meter in five seconds. What we recommend in round yards that it's no more than a metre in five seconds. And in a rectangular yard, even slower, because they gather up more cows, half a metre in five seconds. When you put on a gate, you either have a switch or a button. The problem with switches that turn them on, and you've got to turn them off, is farmers get distracted. Cows get kicked cups off or something, and you forget that the backing gate's going. That's why I recommend a button. You press the button and it makes the gate only go for five seconds and stops even if you forget about it. Then the cat gate won't put pressure on the cows. Less foot damage, better cow flow. Many farmers ask me, what's the best shape for the yard? Should it be a round one or a rectangular one? I wonder what you think. Actually, more important than the shape is the size. So here we've got heaps of room. It'll work just as well as a rectangular one. The reason a farmer might choose a round one compared to a rectangular one is more to do with the setting on the farm than what the cows think. All the cows need is space. In fact, Frisian cows need 1.5 square meters per cow, at least. Jerseys can get away with 1.2, so it's the Base that's more important than the shape. Now we're going to test your knowledge. What's the signs of too much pressure from a backing gate? You've got it. The cows push against each other, the heads come up, and finally poor cow flow. Right, we now want to talk about people and cow flow. We've talked about the effect of track on cow flow, the yard design and the backing gate. We're going to talk now about people. And I know that lots of you will have people that you know, if they're milking, cow flow won't go well. You might have all your reasons, but it's the people. Studies have shown that cows are more afraid of the wrong people than they are of poor facilities. So let's talk about people. I want to tell you a story. Just a few months ago, a farmer called us to vaccinate his cows. He didn't want us to vaccinate them on this side, he wanted them all to go on the left-hand side. We sent one of our veterinarians. Unfortunately, we sent one of our male veterinarians because the farmer was really angry that the male had come and not his favorite young female vet. Anyway, we started the vaccinations on this side and the cows started to go, but then the cow flow just collapsed. The farmer got angry, went in among the cows to get them to come in on this side. His language, his swearing, his anger was so obvious the cows wouldn't flow. He said it's our fault because we sent the male vet rather than the young female. It just didn't work. 
it got worse. Guess what happened? Suddenly, the next minute, a car comes in, the young female vet arrived. The farmer suddenly went up, got happy. He welcomed her in, and you know what? He stopped his swearing, stopped his shouting, stopped running among the cows, and the cows just went in and got vaccinated by the male vet. It had nothing to do with the female. It was to do with his anger, his annoyance at us sending the wrong vet. It was the person, not our veterinarian in this case. Cows are so sensitive to human behavior and there's lots of things people can do wrong. It's really important that everybody in your team understands cow's behavior and works with the cows and not against them. You need a gentle, quiet behavior in your, among your staff and then the cow flow will go really well. Okay, I want to test your knowledge again. Two questions, first about rotary cow sheds. Who affects cow flow more in a rotary cow shed? The person putting the cups on or the person taking the cups off? I can see some of you know the answer. It's the person with cups on. Why are they afraid if there's the wrong person at cups on? They recognize people. If they're afraid of that person, they won't go on. Okay, the second question. How do people affect cow flow in a herringbone shed? Yep, I bet some of you have seen hosing in front of the cows coming on. Of course they stop. Another thing that we often see is if someone comes to the entrance area, reaches up to make the backing gate move, the cows see that as frightening and stop again. Lots of people say, oh, whistling and shouting doesn't matter. It actually makes the cows go out faster, but it stops the cows coming in. The same with tapping the pipework with a plastic pipe. It makes cow flow going out quick, but your real aim is to get the cows coming in and the pipes stop the cows coming in. I've seen it happen all the, many times. Okay, well that's the end of our presentation. There's three things I want you to go home to your farm and do. First, Compare all the things we've talked about on the track and the shed design with your farm. I want you to go home and reduce pressure from this backing gate. Maybe you never have anyway, but reduce pressure on the herd of the backing gate. And the last thing is the people thing. Gentle, consistent behavior in the cow shed. Go to the Dairy NZ website to get all, a whole heap more information than what we've been able to do in this very short presentation.